Hey guys, it's Gary coming back to you here with another press brake video. You see this five foot seventy ton CNC servo brake getting uh, loaded up at the shop there in Texas and hot shotted out to Stephen in Grand Coulee, Washington. And then a few days later, I got the chance to fly up there, and man, was it a super nice, cool treat to be able to see the Grand Coulee Dam. And Stephen's shop was just in the hills right above the dam. And then I stayed at the Columbia River uh, Inn, I think it was, just some cabins right there uh, on the hills. In fact, um, this little shot here is stepping out of the cabins, and you can see the dam in the background there, just right outside the, the deck. So super cool to be able to go up there and see Steven and get him all set up with his new uh, CNC servo brake. Uh, just some information, you know, if you buy a CNC servo brake, um, laser you know that kind of stuff i will come on site if you want me to to do an install on that the smaller uh two axis brakes um one the price point doesn't you know allow for a budget to travel and two they're so simple it's just overkill you know it's i mean literally within an hour on the regular brakes uh, i can have you up and running on the phone and the servo brakes more to them the, the controllers are more complicated there's more setup to do to get those dialed in and running right. So you're seeing some of the footage here of uh, getting the left and right bend set up. And uh, normally there is some adjustment on the setup on, on these, but this was our very first uh, test hit on right and left to make sure they were equal. And you can see they're pretty much dead on. Pretty nice. <laughs> Can you live with that? <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's really close. I don't see light. Maybe, no, once you get up into the vertical leg. Let's cancel out of that okay. and go into the existing one and go edit. Mm -hmm. We need to look at a number in there and then modify, yeah. And go to properties, I think it is. Okay, say, cancel that, and then tool properties. Okay, so that resistance number is the number we need to remember. Okay. We need to so we're just walking Steven uh, here through setting up new punches and dies and the process to get those entered into the library. And while we're doing that, I just wanted to talk about, you know, the performance of this brake. Um, you're going to notice in the video that the movement of the ram is pretty slow. And then the uh, we had a one second dwell time at the bottom of the forming cycle. And you'll notice that, you know, very sluggish dwell time. That's on purpose. This is a brand new brake. And if, if you have this thing running wide open um, with 70 tons, you can blow out this tooling in a heartbeat if you have... Um, you know the wrong parameters set unfortunately they they don't really have a way to know what material you're trying to bend so if you tell it you're bending 16 gauge and a half inch die opening and you stick uh you know eighth inch or quarter inch in there right. and try to bend that uh you so will blow some stuff up in a heartbeat so with it moving slower it's a lot easier to catch an error and prevent any uh issues so that long forming cycle at the bottom is easily tunable the up and down speed, how fast the ram is moving down. I mean, it can go, you know, four times faster than this. And uh, so when, once you get into production mode and you're more skilled and comfortable with it, you can certainly dial it on up there and get it moving super fast. I see how it looks now. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, and it says right there. <laughs> I didn't notice they were running off. So height's going to be a little shorter. And that's overall height. Four four two one. The All radius right. should be on there. So I don't see a radius. Uh -huh. Doesn't have it. 
it's not a variable that's used in the calculation. So we'll well, just, and we'll it's, just... it's got to be super small. Yeah. It's 86 degrees still. It is, yeah. And then V opening is our one inch. It's 25 four. that's one inch. Resistance. That's the number from before that we just looked at. 256.9 or whatever it was. You took a picture of it, right? I did. And then, but that's tons per inch, so it's almost like it's divided it out. So do I need to take that number? Oh, it's the same as your picture. Oh, I see it. 256.95. I see now. I didn't know if it was multiplying that by the width of the break. 256.9. put your first die in. And so. then I just kind of want to see if that drawing was. So it's saying center line distance, right? So what it's doing, so here's what the problem is. The crash calculation is going to be off. See, that's, it's 645 there. See, the die's not centered. Mm -hmm. huh. You got a nice tapered die now. So, <laughs> it's off by a lot. No more exciting. Oh, shit. Undo that. That's a little better. About five minutes off, five and a half. Keep open. So we're just kind of, you know, walking through the basics here, getting the feel for uh, how this machine works and all press brakes. No matter what brand, you know, if it's the, my lowest cost $25,000 press brake, or a $250,000 Amada, they all work in the same principle where in general, they, when you put a target bend in there, they underbend by some amount. You don't wanna take a chance on having an overbend situation and blowing out your tooling. So, you know, they underbend by five to five, 10 degrees, you know, somewhere in that range. So you do a test hit, you measure the bend, and then it's got a place in there where you put the correction. So you have a target bend, you know, say 90 degrees, and then after that, right below the target bend, you have two places to apply correction of both the angle and the back gauge depth. So, um, you know, that's why, you know, commonly press brake shops that do production bending, they have anywhere from a $100 to $250 setup fee. And that is why they do that, you know, because uh, the process to get a bend dialed in, the tooling set up right, you know, it's not always just, you know, walk up to the machine and bam, it's there. There is a little setup involved. Welcome to the world of press brakes. Delta is 0.2125 and it's taller. Yep. This is going to be a positive. So, so what, what we're doing here, he's got a lot of experience now, uh, probably a good hour of messing around with the tool uh, screen to enter new tooling. So his machine, he's got all this extra tooling here that we're trying to get entered in. And um, so it already had, you know, the tooling entered for a couple of pieces, or actually for the, the one piece that it came with. And so now we're gonna add this two inch die, which is what you need for uh, to bend quarter inch. So we're gonna try to videotape this now that he's not a newbie anymore and enter this two inch die into the die screen. This will be good reference for later in case you forget how. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, and it's like you set it up one time and then later. <laughs> uh, all right, so then I'm going to try to get changed. And now we're going to do new. And we're going to say V 2.0. I win 2.4 height 4.26 this 
six. And so on this one, we added the difference between the two dies to the original die. That has a radius. I don't know what it is. All right. And then... Let's put a 0.125 radius on it. Think so? It's probably bigger than that, but... I think that makes sense. It should be fine for this. The angle should still be 86, yeah? Yep. yep. And then the opening is exactly two. This one's easy. And then 256. Two, four, four. Like a boss. Five, eight, two, six, except. There and then is. I've got my point two centered. That's nice. When it's centered, it, it does it automatically. So then we're going to stay, okay. Yeah, so Steven uh, has got a lot of uh, CNC mill and lathe experience. He's done his own uh, retrofit with more modern controllers on older CNC machines. And uh, you can see some of it here in the background as I'm uh, trying to pan you around and give you some looks at it. But, you know, he, he's a quick study on this stuff, you know, just because of the experience. We'll get a look at some of this stuff in a minute. Um, so 180 again. I'm at 180, two inch bend length, in the middle. So when you're setting up new tooling, you always want to do a 180 test. We should be right at the top of the material, but not bend it. Remember before how it touched, it hadn't rested it. So we're going to sneak up on it and put a 135 degree. All right. AKA 45 degree. This is crazy. Love to see that crusty mill scale. <laughs> I'll have to get some plate out. Three, four degrees open? Yeah, four degrees. Cool. You guys probably haven't heard me say this many times in videos, but we always underbend and then use correction to fine tune the bend. So we went 180, then 135. Now we're going to hit 90. It's a little open, but that's a nice looking bed. Oh, uh, yeah. So we're going to measure it. Yeah, same four degrees. Yeah. Consistent from material to material. So now we're going to go right here on the correction screen and add the correction there. Really close. Oh, uh, for quarter inch, whatever you're fabricating, that'd be great. <laughs> we'll call that 90. Yeah. <laughs> Send it. <laughs> That's awesome. It's, it's, it's really close. I don't see light. Maybe, no. Once you get up into the vertical leg, So while we're panning around and look at, looking at some of the cool machines that Steven has in his shop, I wanted to just uh, go on an Uncle G rant here and uh, talk to you about, about this. You know, a lot of people contact me. They, they want to go with the, you know, higher end machines and they just don't have the resources, you know, shop space, funding, um, you know, all those kind of things. And the difference between people that do have all that and that can't seem to find a way to get there is really most of the time just a matter of focus. And you take Steven here, for example, he's got a full-time job that's somewhat related to this, but not really. But that full-time job needs these services. So he has an arrangement where he makes parts 
and sells them to his full-time employer. And so he does that on the side, right? So he's got a full-time job and he makes parts for that full-time job. And then when he's not doing all that, his hobby is in the shop, organizing things, retrofitting older CNC machines, you know, buying a, an older inexpensive CNC machine and retrofitting it with nicer controls. You're looking at this little CNC lathe here that has a super nice acorn uh, control package on it, works really well. So that's how you do it. You know, if, if you have a million different focuses and you spend your free time partying, drinking, smoking weed, you know, in the woods hunting or on the golf course or, or building race cars or, or you have a significant amount of debt, you know, you got a nice GMC Sierra 2500 with a $1,000 a month car payment on it. Yeah, that's, that's the difference. That's how some guys can get it, some guys can't. Servo drives. What servo drives? Do you uh, they're using? dined for uh, DMM out gotcha. of Canada. Yeah, yeah. And then, ah, this is cool. Here, check this out. So this machine has, um, the servos have the zero, uh, they call it the zero reference indicator. Mm -hmm. So when it homes, so when we home the machine for a five second XL cell, and then what's awesome about the Centroid is the MPG. And I will change it. I'll probably do about one second. So it's got really slow XLD cell because I just haven't tuned the drive yet. What's up? Max RPM on this? 30, 3450. And that's only 1800. It just, because I have... So Steven's got a CO2 laser and also a 3D printer. And as you're about to see, there's a 3D printer with some of the um, tool organizers just printed on it. So there's a, a wood laser cut organizer, you know, tab and slot fit together. And then just showing some of the organization of his shop, man. It's, um, if, if you guys are on, uh, I think it's Garage Journal, there's a huge thread about it over there. Um, the organization is just next level. It's, uh, it's, uh, we, we may need to get Steven's, you know, sanity level checked. But uh, anyway, it's something to behold and something for all of us to be envious of. I know I am. I feel like I'm lucky if I get my screwdrivers all in the same drawer. But anyway, have a good one, guys.